On the 12th of June 1882, Elias Taylor and Louisa Cooper, members of two ancient gypsy families, were married at St Mary's Church, East Molsey. Gypsy weddings like this were important for bringing the clergy, as representatives of the wider community, into closer contact with gypsy residents, and they attracted considerable interest. The London Evening Standard newspaper reported the wedding on 13th of June and stated that Prior to the marriage ceremony, a baby belonging to the Cooper family was baptised, after which Elias Taylor, styling himself cab proprietor, and Louisa Cooper, whose father described himself as a traveller, were married. The church was crowded with gypsies who were in the neighbourhood in great numbers to attend the Hampton races. Almost all the gypsies present were profusely decorated with wild flowers. It has become the practice within the last 10 or 15 years, whenever a marriage is agreed upon, to have it celebrated in the church nearest locality where any race meeting is being held which the tribe attends. The newspaper went on to describe Louisa's pale blue French silk dress and cream-coloured satin shawl, and Elias's Sunday best, attesting to their relative wealth. Unusually, the parish register entry was quite clear about their origins. Elias was described as a cab proprietor gypsy, Louisa as a gypsy, whilst their two fathers, Joseph Taylor and Francis Cooper, were described as a cab proprietor gypsy and a traveller gypsy, respectively. It's not always so easy to identify gypsy ancestors in parish registers, where familiar gypsy names or occupations are often the, our only guide. When the elderly and illiterate Aaron Smith and his bride Cordelia Cooper were married at St Mary's Church, Walton-on-Thames, on the 30th of November 1908, they were described as being the children of a scissor grinder and a hawker. The ceremony was witnessed by John and Dinah Sines, members of a well-known local gypsy family, giving extra weight to Aaron and Cordelia's gypsy credentials. Extra clues such as this are immensely valuable for family historians tracing gypsy ancestry. A good example of the church seeking to integrate gypsies more closely with the fabric of settled society can be found in the multiple weddings at St Peter's Woking, now Old Woking, in 1906. On Christmas Day, the Surrey Mirror made a dramatic announcement. No fewer than ten Romany weddings have been solemnised at Woking Parish Church within the last few days. The gypsies have been encamped in the parish for a considerable period and they have been induced to take this step by the vicar and a lady worker who have actively interested themselves in the little community. The announcement was so unusual that the story was covered by local newspapers as far afield as Bath, Hull, Nottingham, Leamington and Sheffield. Among the 12 marriages recorded in the parish register between 27th of November and the 19th of December which is held at Surrey History Centre, there are ten obvious candidates for these reported Romany weddings. Although none of the individuals are explicitly described as gypsies, 19 out of the 20 were labourers and 18 came from families with surnames commonly found among the travelling community in and around Surrey, namely Baker, Williams, Eels, Gregory, Sines and Carey. Five of the weddings involved a Baker Williams link, possibly cementing a family alliance. Erratic schooling due to the travelling lifestyle meant that only six of the twenty individuals were able to sign their name, including the two youngest. The censuses for 1901 and 1911 provide further clues. In 1901, at least three of the children of Albert Williams, forming part of the group, as Henry, Moses and Amy, were living with him in a tent at Tinkersfield, Kingsfield, Woking. In the 1911 census summary books, Ernest and Amy Baker were recorded as living in gypsy tents at Tinkersfield, with Ernest working as a farm labourer. James and Florence West were living in tents in a field near Robin Hood, Knapp Hill, with James working as a farm labourer. James and Clara Baker had apparently found settled accommodation at two market cottages, Woking Village and William and Patience signs were working as hawkers and living in a tent on Chobham Common. The ceremonies were all performed by the Reverend Frederick James Oliphant, 
curate and later vicar of St Peter's from 1876 until his death. A poor law guardian, chairman of Woking School Board and chaplain of Mayford Industrial School, his active interest in local gypsy families stemmed from a lifelong interest in education and missionary work. He worked with the Evangelical Alliance and supported national parochial schools and, in an address to the Solid County Association of the National Union of Teachers in October 1906, he spoke of the bond between teachers and the clergy as fellow labourers in work, that is second to none, a work which God imposed upon all who sought to train children, that of bringing them up in the nurture and fear of the Lord. Taking the word to the gypsy community and cementing it through the sacrament of Christian marriage was central to this vision, particularly as in the process it legitimised existing relationships. As the 1911 census reveals, the signs James and Clara Baker and West's had already had several children respectively at the time of their ceremony. Oliphant was not alone in trying to tie gypsies more closely into the church. The ten ceremonies were also linked by a small circle of formal witnesses, mainly connected to his own household and that of the Reverend Francis Wilson, who had been a school chaplain for much of his career and headmaster of Woking School between 1885 and 1894. Wilson's wife Edith was well known locally for encouraging attendance by gypsy children at Sunday school, for inviting them to Christmas dinner at her home and for renting out two local cottages that she owned to gypsies. It's possible that she may have been the lady worker referred to in the report of the weddings who gave a tea to celebrate the nuptials. No further multiple marriage ceremonies on this scale appear in the St Peter's parish records.